been challenging the singers enough how could we challenge them more oh i know ukrainian song in five four this is a nice gentle way to wake up our voices in the morning one you get real up in that mm sound mouth mostly closed it should feel kind of nasal and emphasis on the ng sound and the last note should not be me it should be mm Ming a ming a ming a ming a ming. Go to the ng sound. Ming a 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 ming. Ming a 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 ming. Ming a 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 ming. Thank you, Kathy. Great to be back with everyone too. Ming a ming a ming a ming a ming. I, I already feel my voice transitioning from chest voice. It's on its way to head voice already, and I'm in the middle of my range. So my voice is wanting to mix, which is what it's supposed to do. So a lot of us, when we learn to sing, the way we learn is we sing our chest voice up until it cracks or we fall over dead, and then we switch to head voice which is obvious to, obviously too late. The, the analogy that my teachers always use is, you know, a, a four lane highway and there's a merge coming and we start seeing the construction signs, uh, right, you know, right lane ends in two miles or left lane ends or merge to two lanes. And some of us wait until we darn near hit the construction cones and then we try to merge and we get mad at the people who aren't letting us in, but the signs for the merge were two miles ago. So, so it is with mix. If you, if we wait, if we sing our chest voice up until the very limit and then try to switch, it's too late. It's not how the system's supposed to work, but nobody tells us that. So we all, you know, or a lot of us, grow up singing wrong and then we wonder why our voice isn't working so i wish they would tell you know when you start singing in whatever third grade just so you know there's this thing called mix and you can learn to use it so the mix is where the two registers overlap and and the bigger the overlap the more flexibility we have so i feel my voice wanting to transition even though my break my official break is not for another five notes 
I'm starting to transition into mix already so that when I get to my mix, I'm already, I've already changed lanes two miles back and I'm ready. Does that make sense conceptually? If, even if you don't, even if you're not familiar with what, what your mix feels like and sounds like, the concept is there where I'm starting to transition and use lighter muscles and, and change my sound so that when I get to the break, I'm already, I'm already there. So we were about here. Ming, 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 on that top note, I'm already transitioning. Ming, 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 Now here's the other thing. Everybody's everybody's mix barriers are different. So so some of you the the bottom and the top of your mix might be similar to mine, but but some of you it's going to be you know over three notes or over three notes and this is something that you have to kind of discover on your on your own and it's a percentage thing so at the bottom of my mix sorry if this is repeat at the bottom of my mix it might be 90 percent chest voice 10 percent head voice two notes later the percentage is different by five percent or ten percent in the middle of my mix, it may be, let's say it's 50-50. At the top of my mix, it's 90% head voice, 10% chest voice. And then at some point, obviously, it's 100% uh, head voice. But again, I say you have to have two, two things to be able to mix, right? A minimum of two things. In this case, the two things are chest voice and head voice. In a minute, we're going to do an exercise where we sing our head voice down as low as we can, lower than we've ever sung it before, lower than you would ever sing it in a concert. The point of that is the more crossover we get between the two registers, the more opportunity we will have to mix. So if your head voice only goes down this far, you're only going to be able to mix those few notes where they, where they cross over. The more we can get our head voice to come down, 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 the more it becomes available to us to mix. Ming 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 I really try not to talk too much in these sessions because I know it's about the singing, but some things warrant, you know, an explanation. So I'll give you a little demonstration. Here's I'm gonna sing this note in my chest voice. Ming a ming a ming a ming a ming. I'm gonna sing it in my head voice. Ming a ming a ming a ming a ming. Now I'm gonna sing it in mix. Ming a ming a ming a ming a ming. I've got three ways to sing that note. Right right now it's wanting to have too much chest in it because it's at the it's at the top of my chest voice and the bottom of my head voice. Okay, uh, here's one that's uh, designed to focus on getting the sound forward in our nose. Nay, 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 nay. Feel free to make a face. And if it's if your sound is pretty, you're doing it wrong. Nay, 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 nay. of you that are new or have no idea why I'm doing this, being able to direct the sound to the nasal part is useful 
because it lifts the sound up. Some of us sing kind of too much in the mouth only, too much in the throat only. There's a whole part of a sound that's very brilliant and pointed that involves the, the nose a little more. Now, obviously, we would never sing a song like this, but doing these exercises makes us aware of this resonance that we can add as needed. And there are times when we struggle with a phrase and being able to sing it in a more nasal manner actually helps us to sing it better. It gets the sound up where it's supposed to be. So it's it's not it's a means to an end. <laughs> waking my voice up. Here's the lip buzz tongue trill raspberry. More, I see more and more of you doing the raspberry, which makes me so happy. rotating between the three partly to challenge myself and partly to, to demonstrate you don't have to do that you can if you want to but if you find one that works for you best just use the one that works for you now i will challenge you in this regard if you find one that's super easy and you've been doing it for a while try one of the ones that's not super easy and see if you can over time get your tongue to relax on the new one as well as it was on the other one. It's fine to do the easy one for a while, but part of this, uh, the goal of this is to make progress. So challenge yourself to try a new one for a minute. just flipped over completely into head voice and I'm way down in the basement. For some reason when I do this exercise my voice just wants to flip over so I let it. these exercises are both instructional and diagnostic so they they reveal the problems that we have in our voice and then they are also the solution to the problem does that make sense did any of you ever did any of you ever employ a personal trainer somebody that you paid to to inflict pain upon you yes <laughs> It's so I sort of feel like that's what this is. It's it's some of the exercises are uncomfortable because they touch on uh, aspects of our singing that that need help. 
Um, obviously the goal is to get better at it, but I just, I'm just sort of aware like, you know, some of the things I'm asking you to do are, are unusual and, and perhaps unpleasant at times. Okay, here we go. Everything's short. So right now, I'm between the penultimate and the ultimate note, I'm flipping into head voice. Now I'm mixing. Are you starting to feel a little warmed up, like the blood is uh, circulating? Okay, let's try this one. For the women, it's going to be way up here. For the men, it's going to be here, or for maybe for the tenors, uh, female tenors. We're going to do this. It's going to be a vocal fry into head voice and then descending five tones. It's going to sound like this. Uh, goo, goo, goo. Stay in head voice. Do not flip out of head voice. So for the women who can, you're going to be up here. Let's try this together. Now, the important thing is to stay in head voice. Try not to let your voice go into mix or chest because we're, the, the point of this is to sing our head voice down as low as possible. sounds squirrely down there but it's, that's not the, the point of it is not the sound the point of it is to keep it in head voice my mind my, my just flipped over so I know it's a new exercise and probably a strange feeling to sing the head voice down though. Some of you may do it easily. Some of you it may be a struggle. We're going to do more and more of that to try to expand the zone where the two registers overlap. The end goal being to be able to mix. The more notes we can mix, the better off we will be transitioning between registers. So it's all about getting the getting the the ranges to overlap head voice and chest voice. Okie doke. Let's start looking at the music. My my goal for today is kind of a brief. Yes, we were starting each note with the letter G. Sorry, I didn't explain that. Um, my goal is to do a brief overview of of all the pieces. So we're not going to spend a ton of time. It's going to be about 10 or 15 minutes on each song just to kind of get the feel of it, get introduced. And then I want to urge you to um, to spend time with the rehearsal tracks. How many of you prefer to download the MP3s from the website? 
few of you. How many of you prefer to go to YouTube and use the ones on YouTube? Yeah. Um, the, the one advantage I can, well, there's a couple of advantages to the YouTube. You don't have to download them. So the second would be you can change the speed. But I realize that some of you prefer to have them mobile, like take them with you on your iPad or your phone or take them in your car. So whatever works for you, but I really, I really urge you to use them because they will, I, I think they will help you learn the music faster and you can drill, you can drill the music at your own, your own pace. You can stop and start wherever you want. And sometimes I know in the group rehearsals, we, we can't necessarily stop and start as much as you personally might want or need. So a call for peace. Let's look at that one for a minute. Everybody learn the melody that's so so this is this one is divided part one, part two, part three, just in case it's not clear. Part one is soprano, part two is alto, part three is tenors and basses. This song is around, so everybody's going to end up singing the melody in their own part, and then they end up overlapping in a cool way. It becomes sort of like a chant. Um, but for now, everybody learn the melody that is um, written at measure five for part three. We're all just going to learn it because you're going to sing it in your own part in a minute anyway. Let's just do la la la. Ready, go. La 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 one and two and one and off. La 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 one and two and off. Just that much again. Back to measure five. One. Two, ready, go. La 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 off. La 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 off. Let's look at the words. Do na no bis pacem. Do na no bis pacem. Off. Do na no bis pacem. Do na no bis pacem. Off. So make sure the is of no bis, the s, doesn't come in too early. Put it right next to the P of Pachen. Don't take a breath and don't have the S make a big mess in the middle there. And the same thing each time we say that word. Let's try with the text. Two, ready, go. Dona nobis Pachen. Dona nobis Pachen. So that's one little piece of the melody. Each of you will end up singing it in your own part. Okay, let's learn the, the piece that starts at 18. It's written in part one or the soprano, but we'll all learn it because we're all going to end up singing it. Let there be peace in all the world, starting at 18. One, two, one. Let there be peace in all the world. Grant us peace. Pa that much again. One and two and one. Let there be peace in all the world. Grant us peace. Pachem. Let there be peace in all the world. Grant us peace. Pachem. 
continues like that, okay? So that's two little fragments of melody that end up getting handed around the song and uh, sung in the different parts. By the way, look at measure 21 and measure 28, measure 35. The word peace is a dotted half note and we're in cut time. <laughs> I love it when they do that. So the, the duration is like this one and two and one and two off one and two off p e e off so pa, uh, let's see here mm. let there be peace in all the world grant us p e e it's like three pulses and off let's try that together just speak it and a one let there be peace in all the world grant us peace off now it might seem like a little thing but if we don't say the c the s of the c sound together it's messy right so it's not peace off it's pee off like three pulses in the tempo of the song it's cutting off on the end of a beat, which is harder than cutting off on a beat. But since you guys are so astute, I'm calling you to I'm calling you to more precise cutoffs. There's a beauty. There's a beauty and a precision in addition to coming in together and coming in on time in a precise way. There's a real beauty when a choir cuts off together, especially if in a, if it's in a tricky spot. Everybody say with me, one and two off. Ready, go. One and two off. Again, ready, and. One and two off. Now we're gonna say the word peace, and we're gonna cut off in the same spot, and we'll pulse it three times. P -E -E off. Ready, go. P -E -E off. Now let's do the whole phrase and do the, the cutoff in a precise way. Let there be peace. Ready and one. Let there be peace in all the world. Grant us peace off. One more time. Ready and one. Let there be peace in all the world. Grant us peace off. Okay, let's move on to another song. That's just a little taste of that one. Ani Ma Amin. Many of you know what this song is about and the historical uh, context of this song. For those that don't, I'm going to read an email from Jonathan that sort of summarizes it. Uh, this was not a story that I knew. Uh, but many of you will know it. I just want to read it because it gives the song um, new meaning for those of us that for whom it's new. Sorry, wrong folder. Well, this part first, as you may recall, our upcoming spring 2023 program is called Overflowing Hearts. You've experienced our eclectic programming before, so you won't be surprised that the selections are drawn from a wide variety of sources. This session, we are reaching into those parts of human experience where our hearts are wide open, whether in joy, love, faith, splendor, longing, or a similar strong emotion. Ani Ma Amin is a Jewish melody with a text based on the 12th century philosopher Moses Maimonides. Is that correct? Am I saying the name right? No, Maimonides. 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 Moses Maimonides. The title words mean simply, I believe. In a response of sorts to the Christian and Muslim theologians of his time, Maimonides wrote a famous 13-point diatribe. 
13 point digest of the Jewish faith. The 12th of these lines is the one that this song sets. I believe with perfect faith in the coming of the Messiah, even though he may tarry, I will await him. The most famous melody on this text pulls on the heartstrings of many, if not all Jewish people, and for good reason. The story is dramatic and poignant. There is a sect of Jews known as the Modzitzer Hasidim, originally from Poland. A member of the Modzitzer group, uh, Azriel David Fastag, composed many songs performed at the court of the Modzitzer Rebbe, who's the head rabbi. The Rebbe was smuggled out of Poland and eventually made his way to America. Fostog was not so lucky. He was captured by the Nazis and transported in a cattle car to the Treblinka concentration camp. The tale is told that while on the journey, Fostog became completely engrossed in the words of Ani Ma'amin, composed the melody on the train and taught it to the people who were around him. Soon the entire train was singing the melody and he announced, I will give half my portion, half my portion in the world to come to whoever can take my song to the Modzitsa Rebbe. Two young men jumped from the train to do this. One was killed instantly, but the other survived, escaped and made it to Israel where he found the Rebbe's son and taught him the melody. The son in turn sent the sheet music to the Modzitsa Rebbe in the US and the tune soon spread from that synagogue all over the Jewish world. On a more tragic note, the song was also sung by countless Jews as they marched to their deaths in the gas chambers. It is closely associated with the tragedy of the Holocaust and is sung at annual Holocaust Remembrance Day services and sometimes on Passover. Our setting is by American composer John Levitt, who treats the tune with utmost care and sensitivity. Levitt also arranged the Ose Shalom that our choirs did a few years ago. So that's the, that's the history of this text. Uh, many of you know that story, some of you don't, and uh, just wanted you to be aware of it as we start rehearsing. Okay, uh, there's, a little, there's a little gap. Ani ma amin. After the syllable ma, we make a little gap. Ani ma amin. Ani ma amin. And then this one we don't. Ani ma amin. Let's try it. Two, ready, go. Ani ma amin. Ani ma amin. Ani ma amin. Keep going. again and then we'll go back and look at the parts individually start the last measure bottom of page one two ready go Altos, please, at measure 10. That's where the harmony starts. Two, three, alto. Anima amin. Anima amin. Anima amin. Once again, altos, two. Ready, go. Anima amin, anima amin, anima amin. Sopranos, let me hear you at the same place, please. Two, ready, measure ten. Anima amin, anima. 
the soprano it's the same melody as the preceding four measures let's hear alto and soprano together please and measure ten two three go okay let's hear tenors and basses two Tenors. Tenors, let's start at 12. Anima Once again, tenors, two, ready, go. Anima Bases in the same spot. Measure 12, ready, bases. Anima Anima Tenors and basses from 10. Two, ready, go. Anima parts at 10 please here's the bass and tenor alto and soprano one two three measure ten good now everybody go back to the last measure bottom of page one One, two, last measure, page Love it. Okay, so that's just a little taste of Anima Amin. Let's move on, please. Down to the river to pray. So, um, Ken Miedema, he's he's credit the the first song um as i went down to the river to pray is a kind of a traditional spiritual but the second song lord listen to your children praying is composed by ken Miedema. ken for those of you that don't know is a sort of a savant genius musician who's also blind from birth and he plays piano and sings and composes and he does a thing in his con he's in his 70s now probably he might be in his 80s but i first heard of him when i was a kid because he wrote this fantastical 12-minute song called moses 
and my choir director at church exposed me to it and it sort of changed my life it's like it's the it's the story of moses encountering god at the burning bush told told in a musical way again it lasts about 12 minutes it's crazy the music is crazy it keeps changing styles to reflect the conversation between god and moses but he does a thing in his concerts where he will spontaneously compose a song. He'll ask for three words from the audience, you know, and they, you know, it might be hairbrush and, and uh, spaghetti and uh, sunset. And he will, without hesitation, compose a song that uses those words in a beautiful way with a verse and a chorus and a bridge and the repeat of the chorus. And it all, and it all makes sense like he spent, like he spent a week on it. He can he can compose things literally on the spot that have a melody that you walk away humming and he spent zero time on it. It's just one of the most gifted individuals I've ever met. Anyway, let's jump over to the chorus part, which is the pickups to page five. So it starts with, oh, oh, Lord, mm, listen to your children praying. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, Lord, mm, listen to your children praying. Oh, Lord, send your spirit in this. Oh, Lord, listen to your children. Just that much. Repeat. A one, two, three. Oh Lord, um, cha 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 cha. Um, cha cha. Send your spirit in this and two and three. Oh Lord, um, listen to your children. and tenors. One, two, three. Oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Oh Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. So basses and maybe some of the tenors who are men, you might be mixing already or you might need to mix because this might start to feel a little bit high. Put it this way, if you mix, it'll be easier to sing. Basses and tenors, one, two, and a three. Oh, Lord. Listen to your children praying. Oh Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Altos, let me hear you. One. Two, three, oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Oh Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power. Send us grace. Let's try the bass tenor alto together. One, two, and a three. Sopranos 
so let me hear you. One, two, and a three. Oh, Lord, listen to your children pray. Oh, Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh, Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us Send us grace. All the parts together. A one, two, three. Oh Lord. kind of a gospel gospel feel to it that's a little taste of that one moving on I sing because I'm happy this one is very gospel kind of high energy gospel here we go tenors and basses happy sorry here we go measure four tenors and basses two three four I sing because I'm happy. Altos come in next. I sing because I'm free. Soprano, his eye is on the sparrow. Just that much. We'll learn the next phrase in a minute. So tenors to basses, one, two, three, four. I sing because I'm happy. Alto, I sing because I'm free. Soprano, his eye is on the sparrow, and then we all go, and I know he watches me, keep going, I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Just that much. So that's the chorus of the song that's going to come back quite a bit. Back to measure four. One, two, three, and I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Uh, Basses, let's learn your part on, and I know he watches me. Let's do it at um, measure 17 so you don't have to turn a page. And I know he watches me. So the, you hear the sopranos do this. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Is the bass. The tenor is. And I know he watches me. Tenors again, a one, two. And I know he watches me. Okay, tenor and bass together. One, two, three. Okay, altos, you have one. Two, and I know he watches me. This is all starting at 17. Altos again, a one, two. And I know he watches me. Bottom three parts, bass, tenor, alto. A one, two, three. And sopranos at that same spot. One, 
too. And I know he watches me. Once again, I want to. And I know he watches me. All the parts. Bass, tenor, alto, soprano. Let's go real nice and slow. One, two, three. Once again, one, two, uh, three. Let's go back and do the whole chorus starting at bar four. One, two, three, go. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. That's it. That's a little taste of that one. Okay. That's going to be with a drummer. They've uh, hired a percussionist for this concert. Okay. I'm going to, for the time being, see what time it is. Uh, we can spend, I'm going to, I'm going to skip Michael row the boat for the moment. And let's skip over to the foray setting of PA Asia. I think I've told you guys this story, but this, this one was edited and arranged by a guy named Russ, Russell Robinson. Russell is an educator, composer, arranger, and one of his specialties is um, taking pieces of great classical music and editing them for uh, middle school, like making them, uh, simplifying them a little bit and um, revoicing them such that that middle school choirs can sing them and kind of get exposed to music of the great composers. Well, I was on a recording session of his. I had not met him. I didn't know who Russell Robinson was. I'd heard his name, but I didn't know what he looked like. And, you know, in these recording sessions, they just put music in front of you and you're expected to read it and, and make it happen instantly. And this particular manuscript was handwritten and almost illegible and it was in Latin or French or something and we couldn't none of us could read the notes hardly and they were like you know erase marks and arrows and like it looked like a just terribly marked up edited thing we were having trouble reading the notes we were having trouble reading the text and I said something like who, who put this garbage in front of us well it's a room full of microphones like you can't you know anything anything you say or think gets heard. And I didn't realize that the guy, the producer running the session was, was Russell Robinson. I don't know that he heard me, but the guy, the person next to me elbowed me like, Hey, it's, it's his chart. The guy right there, the guy right there that that's kind of the boss for today. He wrote this. So you might want to shut up. Somehow I avoided getting in trouble. I can only assume that he didn't hear what I said. Otherwise, I might have gotten fired and sent home. It wouldn't have been the first time. Okay, let's just learn it on La 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 for a minute. La La La, and then we'll do the, the Latin in just a second. One, two, ready, go. La, 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 la. Sorry, there's no bass part at the moment. Uh, bass is if you want, you can smoke a cigarette or you could sing along on the tenor or the alto part. Or you could, or you could contemplate your life choices. Here we go. La 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 again. Two. Ready, go. La, 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 la. la, 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 
So the text, P ye Jesu Domine, Dona e Israquiem, Dona e Israquiem, off. That cutoff is right on the beat, which is generally easier than the and that we were looking at on the other song. Let's try it with the text. Two, ready, go. One more time. Two, ready, go. Okay, now try it with you singing and me playing the accompaniment. Here's two bars. Sing here. And a little interlude. Try singing here. little phrase of basses. This is your entrance at 11. Basses, top of five. Two, three, go. What it, that's what it sounds like when a tenor sings bass. Um, it's 98% air and 5% tone. For about five minutes in the morning, I got some good low notes. And then as soon as I warm them up, they're gone. Basses, two, ready, go. For those of you that don't have that note, Requiem. Tenors, let me hear you. Two, ready, go. Once again, tennis. Two, ready, go. respond to a private message here real quick. Thanks for your patience.
Okay, so basses and tenors together on this phrase. Here's bass, here's tenor. One, two, ready, go. Let me hear you, please. Two, ready, and piezo domine, do la eis requiem, do la eis requiem. Let's add the tenor and bass back in, but we're focusing on the alto. Here's the bass, tenor, alto. One, two, three, four. Tricky notes in there, altos. Sopranos, let me hear you please. One, two, ready, go. that beautiful melody. I love Foray. I've never heard anything of his I didn't love. Two, ready, go. parts together. Bass, tenor, alto, soprano. One, two, ready, go. From the beginning that far, starting at measure three, back on page one. Here we go. One, two, measure three, everybody. to perform it. Good job. Moving on. Top of the world. Where else can you go to hear the Carpenters and Anima Amin and Fare all in one show? By the way, you need, you're, you need to have a score that looks like this. There is, there is an, the one from the publisher has a green cover. The one from the publisher looks like this. 
but that's not the one we're going to be singing from because we have made some edits to it. Does anybody not have not have this one? If so, I might skip rehearsing this one until we've all got the same score. So here's what happened. Jonathan wanted to do this song and he ordered this arrangement from the publisher, the one with the green cover. But then there are some things in it that are kind of goofy. They, they straightened out some of the syncopations, uh, probably with the goal of making it easier to sing. But all of us know it from the radio with the syncopations. And so singing it straighter sort of becomes stupid. We all want to sing it. We all want to sing it uh, um, syncopated because that's how we know it. So Jonathan ended up making edits to it. But for me to try to teach you all those edits by rote would be a colossal waste of time. So he ended up re-engraving it, which is what this, this other score is. So Helen has a good idea here. We may need to send it to people who are online only. I think I'm going for, for now, I think I'm going to skip it because those of you that don't have the updated score will be possibly frustrated by the differences in the notation. Okay, let's move on and we'll... Hey, Paul. Yes. Hey, Paul. Uh, Joy has a comment. Okay. Joy, you're muted. We can't hear you, Joy. We can't hear you, Joy. Uh, uh, the Monday rehearsal, we got a copy that has soprano alto, and that includes everyone was given that one. Is there a special page for bass and tenor? Yeah, so there's, there's actually three versions, all of which have, they contain... Ultimately, they contain the same information, but there's one for tenors and basses, there's one for altos and sopranos, and then I've got one that's got everybody's info. Okay, on. well, it looks like Monday, I'll have to get, get to Jonathan and so tell him he needs to bring some bass tenors to uh, the Monday rehearsal. Okay, I didn't- Because we only, got the, we only got the soprano alto one, that's the only one he gave out. Those are those, Paul, those are the only ones we were given to hand out. They say soprano alto at the top, but all the parts are there. Oh, okay. I think That's it's, good. so the way, <laughs> the, the soprano uh, alto version has a bass line in it. Yeah, I'm laughing. Yeah, I see it. I know exactly what happened. The, the program finale that he used to engrave it is the same one that I use. And there's a there's a way when you when you export it you can label the parts. So what probably happened was he he formatted the one for for soprano and alto. Yeah. Okay. And he labeled it and he exported it and then he did the next one but he forgot to change the. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Title. So they they all yeah, have the same title but they have different they have different information. It's just a it's sort of like a it's sort of like a little sitcom to just watch what happens. Okay. If you send out, like if you set, if you were leading an orchestra and you gave everybody a part that was labeled violin, but but actually some of them were bassoon parts and some of them were trombones and some of them were percussion, but they're all labeled violin. And just watch the watch the chaos ensue. <laughs> everybody. So how are we? Who have the green version? How are we going to get the uh, corrected parts? I don't know. Probably what, what should happen is when, when this session is over, I will send an email to headquarters, which is at the Pentagon. And I will say, hey, there is quite a bit of confusion because there was some confusion at my rehearsal on Wednesday in Arlington Heights. There's some confusion because not everybody has it. And then some, you know, some people have a copy that's labeled soprano and alto, but they're singing tenor and bass, and the tenor and bass is actually on their part, but it's confusing when you look at the title. Okay. So I'll send a, I'll send an email, or maybe we should all send an email. <laughs> so, so Jonathan checks his email and sees like, you know, all 50 people from the online thing. It's a little bit of a cluster. It's it's resolvable, but it's just a little bit confusing for today. Let's see if we can't get it sorted out by. Uh, and congratulations to your trombone playing daughter, who's in the all state 
Otter's Choir, or is it a National Otter's Choir? It, it was the all. It was the All State Honors Illinois All State Honors Orchestra. She was principal trombone. Is that terrific or what? I was. I was blown away by the level of play. I, I, some of you have probably participated in Allstate when you were in, in high school. Some of you probably attended if your kids were in it. I, I've never been to one before just because she's my oldest kid and I grew up overseas. So I, I went to it really not knowing what to expect. And they have a, they have a level that's called Allstate. And then they have now a level above that called All State Honors. And they had a All State Honors concert band, which was probably 120 kids. They had an All State Honors choir, which was probably 300 kids. And they had an All State Honors orchestra, which is probably 130 kids. And the, you know, the orchestra has fewer wind players. It's you know comprised primarily of string players, and then the the woodwind and brass sections are much smaller. And uh, they play like adults. It's it's all the kids who are really serious about it. It's all the kids who practice and who you know many of whom will go on to study in college. It's kind of the you know the kids for whom this is a real thing, and they. They did three selections. One was called Eroica from a symphony called Internet Symphony by a Chinese composer, Tan Dun. So it quoted from Eroica by Beethoven, but it had some Chinese elements in it and Chinese percussion. The second piece was Promise of Living by Copland from his opera, The Tenderland. It's the same melodic material as Zion's Walls that we sang. Mm -hmm. So when, it, you can't tell it at first, but at some point at the big moment, it's like, oh, this is Zion's Walls. It's that's that's where he derived his his compositional material. And then the final selection was Finale from Symphony Four by Tchaikovsky, which has these crazy fast violin passages, crazy fast woodwinds. Like when it starts, you're like, oh, I can't believe these are high school kids playing this. And then these big uh, fanfarish brass sections over the top of it. I mean, the place went nuts. And just high school kids, you know, just doing their thing. I was, I was blown away. And turns out the maestro is a friend of mine. So when it's when it was over, I hopped over the railing and went down there and introduced myself. And and he said, Why are you here? And I said, Well, my daughter's back there playing trombone for you. And he went, Oh, he said, Yeah, I noticed her. <laughs> Anyway, she said the trom the trombone and trumpet section was the cockiest bunch of kids. You, I mean, they they're all so confident and self assured, and they came to play. I promise you, it's it's all over internet. The, it's all over YouTube. I posted it in an unmarked link on uh, on YouTube just to share with family and friends. But by the next day, there were twenty seven versions of it from other people that were sitting there. Everybody was filming it on their iPhone and putting it on YouTube. If you search ILMEA, which is Illinois Music Educators Association, ILMEA 2023 All State Honors Orchestra, there's there's 20 versions of it on YouTube. You can't believe you can't believe it's high school kids playing. They rehearsed for nine hours on Thursday and nine hours on Friday, and then did the concert on on Saturday. She said her face was falling off. Okay, Ukrainian River. So I talked way too long about that, but it was exciting. Paul, can I take you back for a minute? Yeah. So are the practice tapes right? Correct for Top of the World, though. The practice tapes are correct. Okay. And it'll match. Uh, what, those of you that have that alternate score, it'll match. And I'm sorry for those of you that don't. Let's see if we can't get it corrected and get you sent the right score. Okay, Ukrainian River song. I think I made. I think when I when I began working on this on Wednesday, I made too much of a deal of it. I think I tried to explain counting in five four, and it and it confused some people. 5-4 is a little bit tricky. I find that I have to count because it, it, if I try to do it by feel, 
I always come in a beat early because my I don't feel five four that easily. One two three four five. One two three four five. One two three four five. One and two and one and two and three four. So that you know it starts at measure seven. It's in five, but then measure ten is in four. So I don't think it's that confusing when you listen to it. That's the opening phrase. Listen again. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One and two and three and four and. Make sense? Let's listen one more time. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One and two and. Just sing it on la la la, and we'll go back. So Anne has an idea, Paul. For the people who are missing the three-page top of the world, they could email Laura at headquarters and ask her to mail a copy to them. It to the chorus master for them that's in the chat are you guys seeing that that's a good idea and it's got her it's got her laura's email laura with a last name that has no vowels in it you guys know laura have you met her um helen what's her last name off the top of your head sinchek yeah all the all the vowels have been replaced with other letters Okay, let's do this. Let's just do la la la, and then we'll we'll learn the Ukrainian another time. But let's just learn the notes. So one, two, three, four, five. Once again, a one, two, three, four, five. the choir 300 voice choir of the best high school singers in illinois they sounded like grown-ups also and they did really beautiful music tenors let me hear you please two three four five la, 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 la. tell you this little motif repeats a lot the song is very repetitive so once you kind of learn it and get it in your head it comes back around quite a bit here's the bass and the tenor just on la 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 one two three four five once again basses and tenors two three four five Altos, please. One, two. Hey, altos, it's kind of high, so you could sing it in your head voice or you could sing it in mix. One, two, three, four, five. La, 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 I find that at the end of our rehearsals, my voice is really warmed up. One, 
two, three, four, five. La 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 la. Let's try the bottom three parts: bass, tenor, alto. One, two, three, four, five. Once again, bottom three, bass, tenor, alto. One, two, three, four, five. Sopranos, one, two, three, four, five. La, 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 la. All the parts together, bass, tenor, alto, soprano. One, two, three, four, five. Then we turn the page and that all repeats starting at 11. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're at 15, and let's just do 15 uh, on la 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 as well. Bass is at 15. Actually, basses and tenors. One, two, ready, go. that much again. It's a very joyful, it's a, it's a indigenous dance. You can tell that it's supposed to be danced to, I think you can tell. Here we go, 15 again, basses and tenors. One, two, 15. La, 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 la
So that's kind of the two opening sections. Let's go back to seven and sing through there just on la 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 to get a sense of the first few pages. So we'll start at seven. Here we go, seven, a one, two, three, four, five. Speaking of hey, that's kind of a good place to stop. I don't think this one's as hard as some other ones we've sung, even though it's in mixed meter and even though it's in Ukrainian, I don't think it's going to be as difficult to learn as some other ones that we've tackled together. Let me stop the recording.